Hello bearded bee people. Welcome back to the B&K's Bees channel. Uh, a question I get asked a lot, especially around this time of year, it's the 7th or 8th of July, um, is when do I add another box? Uh, the short answer is earlier rather than later. Um, if the bees are established in the hive location, giving them a little extra space isn't going to convince them that the place is unsuitable and cause them to abscond. Um, it might, however, allow them too much space uh, with too few bees to defend it, so you don't want to add too much. Uh, so you do want to kind of hit it right in line with uh, when they're going to need it, but like I said uh, earlier rather than later. So I don't know if this one needs another box, but I think it's right there at that point where it's uh, a decision that needs to be made. And so I'm going to check it out and I'm going to talk about what uh, factors go into my decision making as far as when to add another box. Um, <clears throat> To kind of elaborate a little bit on the short answer, I like to say six or seven frames covered, uh, covered with bees, whether the frames are filled with honey or pollen or brood, capped or otherwise, um, you're, you're playing into what the bees think as far as the amount of space they have when you're talking about how many they have covered. So if they have five or six covered that you can see, that's a, a point at which you're going to have to start thinking about adding the next one. This one I think there's at least one, two, three, four, five, maybe six. Um, so like I said, that's at that point where you have to make that decision and the decision is going to be based on what those frames are filled with. If they're filled with a lot of brood and a lot of capped brood that's going to be emerging over the next week or so, then I'm probably going to err on the side of safety and add another box. If it's filled or with young, young brood or um, mostly food, uh, then I might think otherwise. But then again, um, if it's filled with mostly food, I want to, might want to add another box so that I can move the food up and out of the brood area to allow them more space to lay eggs to grow quicker. So uh, there's a lot of factors that go in, but hopefully you'll be able to get a little bit of insight based on the decision I make based on what's inside this box. Always pull the outside frame first. One of the outside frames, an easy one to get to, so that you have less of a chance of rolling the queen. All right, this one's just starting to be drawn out and they're filling it with honey. It's the outside frame, so that's good. I can live with that. I'm gonna set it off to the side. I glanced quickly for the queen, didn't see her. She's not likely to be on that frame, but that doesn't mean you'll never see her on that frame. So be careful. All right, so this one is full of emerging brood and there's the queen. Right up there by my left hand. It's full of some emerging brood on the outside, but being laid up on the inside. This is pollen interspersed with capped brood. All right, so we note that in our minds. There's one frame that is going to be contributing to a population growth over the next couple days. Got some more. So, all right, so this was a split that I did. So a lot of, uh, just recently, so a lot of the brood that had been hatching while they were waiting for new uh, eggs to be laid, they backfilled it with honey and pollen. So that's why the brood looks a little odd right there. There's pollen and nectar all the way throughout, which is fine. But on the outskirts, once again, we have emerging brood. The same situation here. Emerging brood on the out, freshly laid eggs and young larvae on the middle. So there's two frames that will be contributing to this hive's population growth over the next few days. All right, here we have another case of some nectar and a lot of eggs. On this side, we have some older brood, um, a small patch of it, and a lot of young eggs. And then we have to note this. This is new. This little piece of burr comb is new over the last week. 
So that will tell me that the nectar is flowing. Um, when the nectar is flowing, they're more apt to expand, they're more apt to swarm, um, they're more apt to do work in general. So that goes into the decision that I'm going to make. The nectar's flowing, they want to draw out comb, they want to build up. That doesn't mean that I'm going to keep that piece of burk home there, though. It's got to go. All right, so those were three brood frames, and here it looks like blank foundation. Not so much, though. There's some comb that they've started to draw out, and the queen didn't wait very long to start laying in it, so there's fresh eggs there. I honestly don't have any idea if you'll be able to see anything from this. But there are fresh eggs in there. And they're starting to draw this out as well. Alright, so there's four brood frames. The last one kind of stretches the definition of the term brood frame, but it doesn't mean that I won't consider it a brood frame. Alright, so there's a little patch of capped brood, not quite yet emerging. Nectar on the outside and some fresh eggs. It's another patch of capped brood. None looks emerging, but it will be contributing to the hive's population growth. Alright, so this left side here has some stuff that they weren't paying as much attention to. So, this is going to play into my decision as well. Empty, but drawn. Looks like they have at least one more empty, but drawn. Alright, so bring you over here and fill you in on my decision. Okay, so I'm not going to add another box this time. What I am going to do is grab these three frames and checker them in here. I'm going to flank it on the outside by food and or uh, something blank. But I'm going to bring those in here before I add any more space up top. Adding more space up top, especially if it's drawn but empty comb, will, will uh, encourage them to draw just the right side of this hive. So then we'll have two or three boxes by the end of the year that uh, have just the right sides drawn out. So, next week might be a different story where I... Uh, uh, where I might add another box. In fact, I probably will. But for now, I'm just going to check her. That'll do the same thing as far as swarming is concerned. It'll give the bees more space to pay attention to and lessen the feeling that the bees might get of being cramped that starts the swarm process. So, I'm gonna pull these out. Make sure that they're empty, or empty-ish, this is. This is, ooh, that's gross, just old. And this is. So I'm gonna bring this one that they're starting to fill with honey to the outside and then I'm going to put it drawn but empty. These ferns are driving me crazy. And then it's going to be brewed and then drawn but empty. And then I'll bring these two over And then drawn but empty. And then it'll be these two. And then 
in their other food frame. Alright, so now hopefully they feel like there's some more room and hopefully they fill out those drawn but empty uh, combs with brood by the next time I get in here. And if that's true, even just a little bit on, on most of those other frames, I will be adding another box. There's a lot of bees in here, but we did what we were trying to do by lessening their uh, sense of, of space or great adding to their, their sense of space and lessening the uh, feeling of being cramped by checkering in those frames. So if you like this video, click like. I'd appreciate that. If you haven't already, click subscribe. There'll be a lot more videos like this as the year goes on and, and going forward. Uh, but either way, uh, thanks for watching and get out there and have some fun with your bees.